So TikTok is convinced that acne breakouts are caused from your washcloth and that the solution is to instead buy um, single use disposable face towels. Okay, so it's 2023. If you're not using disposable wipes to dry your face, what are you doing? I used to use just like a towel like this to dry my face after I wash my face, but these towels hold so much bacteria and you're basically just wiping it on your face every time you dry your face. So I got the wipes, the box on AliExpress. I think the box was like seven, eight dollars. I got two packs of a hundred count of these wipes for ten dollars total. And they're super soft, they're disposable, they dry your face, you throw them away. I usually will like wipe my counter down with it after. But don't be paying crazy prices. Like, there's a certain brand that sells them. I almost bought them. No, no, no. You can find your own on AliExpress for way, way cheaper. Do it. If you have acne-prone skin like I do, as you can see, you need to start getting on these. Actually, even if you don't have acne-prone skin, you should still get on them. And no, they are not tissue paper. They're actually disposable towels that you can use right after you wash your face to make sure you're not accumulating the same dirt over and over again and that you have a clean towel every time. These ones you can easily find on Amazon and they come with I believe about a hundred sheets and you're good to go. Um, should you be blowing your hard-earned money on that? Um, in short, no. <laughs> Uh, unless you want to, uh, but I would say save your money and let's be honest, these single use disposable items, whether it be face towels, makeup wipes, not the most environmentally conscious thing to do. It's a lot of waste. When it comes to the claim that using a regular towel that you can wash on your face causes acne or leads to acne breakouts, <clears throat> I've got to tell you, as a dermatologist, I have really never seen anybody whose acne is caused by their towel. Acne pathogenesis is complex and it involves your genetics, your oil glands making a lot of oil, you, the cells lining your pore don't turn over efficiently in their maturation and they get stuck together combined with the oil and they make a little plug, it's called a comedone. And within your pore, there's a bacteria called Cutibacterium acnes that breaks down the oil, generates a lot of inflammation. Acne is you know, related to your genetics and to your hormones because hormones signal to the oil gland to make more oil. Towels are not the cause of acne. That being said, if you're using a towel that's very rough, very abrasive, it definitely can be irritating to the skin. It can disrupt the skin barrier, cause irritation that might aggravate your acne by virtue of inflammation, because acne is an inflammatory skin condition. Um, but you've gotta be rubbing pretty rough. That being said, I have seen people on the internet, you know, doing their routines and the like, or taking off their makeup and like rubbing stuff, rubbing a, a rough towel back and forth. That can definitely aggravate acne. But using a towel, is not going to transfer bacteria to your face that cause acne. The acne causing bacteria, they're already on you. They don't come from a towel, they're already on you. In fact, we all have that acne causing bacteria, but it's thought that people who have acne, they actually have a specific strain of that bacteria. And that might underscore part of why they have acne in addition to their genetics and hormones. Um, I digress, the, the, the acne causing bacteria is not living on your towels. So you're not gonna transfer it to your face and cause acne. So let's get that out of the way. The way that, that towels could aggravate acne though is if they're very abrasive and you're rubbing your face. That can be very irritating. Just like, you know, I don't recommend using uh, harsh scrubs or anything of that sort. It can be very irritating, not just for acne, but for anyone's skin. You wanna be careful that you're not you know, just rubbing and buffing with, with a towel. It can, it can really be irritating. The other thing in a towel that might be irritating to the skin, not necessarily for acne specifically, but really for anyone, is the dyes. Dyes in fabrics, whether it be your towels or your clothing, they can be irritating to the skin. I would say in your clothing though, it's more of an issue than in a towel because with clothing, you're, you're wearing it all day. It's up against your skin for a much longer period of time. And as you go throughout your day, you sweat. Um, so the dyes, you know, they mix with your sweat they rub off onto your skin. That's really where it's more of an issue. Not like 
the short contact of patting, you know, a pink bath towel to your face. Not likely irritating unless you're just super sensitive to the dyes. So like I said, you do not need to be buying these disposable towels for preventing acne breakouts. They should not make a huge difference for your acne. Again, the acne causing bacteria, it doesn't live on towels and it's not going to be transferred to your face. But, 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 um, linens, bedding, uh, towels, they definitely can aggravate skin problems and they can transfer microbes to the skin, not specifically the acne causing bacteria, but other little critters can live in them. But guess what? Washing your linens regularly can get rid of these things and make it not an issue. So let's talk about some specific microbes that can be problematic with your linens. First one is staph bacteria. Um, a lot of people develop uh, what's called impetigo or staphylococcus folliculitis. Uh, these are skin conditions related to a bacteria called staphylococcus aureus. And some of those strains of that bacteria can actually be very stubborn and resistant to getting rid of with traditional antibiotics. So they can really be a problem for people and they deal with recurrent bouts of these skin infections caused by staph bacteria. Some people have the staph bacteria that just naturally lives in their nose. They're colonized, their nose is colonized by it. So they end up transferring it and it can get into little tears in the skin, cracks in the skin and cause a skin infection. Especially if you um, have a condition called atopic dermatitis where you have an impaired skin barrier. It allows for bacteria to set up shop more readily. Another group of people who get staph infections, whether it be impetigo or folliculitis, are athletes who spend a lot of time in communal gym areas because this bacteria can hang out on surfaces like you know gym equipment. So when you deal with these conditions, you have to be mindful of your towels. Make sure that you are washing them um, after each use in hot water with bleach to kill that bacteria because you can transfer it to other parts of your body and to other people who cohabitate with you. So don't share your towel in that case. Um, but that's a specific scenario where, yeah, your towel definitely can be playing a role. I will say that staph folliculitis can look like acne, but it's not the same thing. Um, and it's gonna be happening on the body, like the, the buttocks is a common area, the thighs, um, where you have a lot of follicles and you can actually develop boils related to staph infections. Not pleasant and yeah, you do need to be careful with your towels, but like using single use towels is not really necessary. You just need to wash your towels regularly. Then the other scenario where you can be transferring um, little microbes to other areas of your skin is if you are dealing with athlete's foot or ringworm, uh, you can actually transfer the, the fungus to other parts of your body or to someone else if you share those towels. So for example, what can happen is people develop athlete's foot. That's a common name for um, fungus on the feet. They can have, develop athlete's foot and then they may use a towel to dry off their feet and then take that towel to other parts of their body and they can transfer that little fungus to other parts of their body. Like it's not uncommon actually for people to pick up um, athlete's foot in a gym locker. Again, the, these little guys, they love to hang out in these moist communal environments like you know a sauna, a steam room, a locker room, shower room. And if you walk around barefoot, they can jump on your <laughs> jump on your feet. I mean, not literally, they don't have legs, but they can get on your feet, cause athlete's foot. That's where that term comes from. And then what can end up happening is like I said, you know, you, you dry your feet off with a towel and then maybe you dry the rest of your body. You can bring it up, up to other parts of your body, your legs, you can get, get, get ringworm or the groin area can cause jock itch. Um, so that's definitely a situation where, yeah, your towel can be the problem. For people who are not dealing with ringworm or staph infections, how often should you be washing your towels? At least after every three uses. Another thing that can influence the cleanliness, if you will, of your towel is where you are storing it. If, you, if your bathroom doesn't get good circulation, it stays humid in there, damp, and you hang up your towel in there, 
it's gonna take longer to dry. It becomes a more hospitable environment for little microbes. For that reason, I say wash your towels a lot more frequently. Likewise, your washcloths can be doing the same thing. So with a washcloth, make sure you wash those after every use. And uh, you know, again, if you've got staph, bacteria, or ringworm, you wanna be washing those in hot soapy water or with bleach to get rid of that because you will transfer those little critters to other body parts. One of the reasons I don't recommend a loofah is that you really can't clean out those loofahs uh, particularly well and they may also harbor some of these microbes which again if you deal with recurrent staph infections or ringworm can definitely be a problem for you moving into the bedroom though let's talk about your bed linens because bed linens can be problematic for your skin possibly aggravating acne, but not you know directly contributory for a few reasons. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they sweat in their sleep um, to some extent. Plus, when we sleep, we shed skin cells into the bed. Um, so this moisture and the skin cells, it can you know be a favorable environment for microbes, but, but the critter that really loves your bed and you know the moist environment of damp sheets from your sweat and all of your skin cells is dust mites. Dust mites, love that. If you have atopic dermatitis, dust mites are your nemesis. So really encourage frequent laundering of your bed linens at least once a week to cut down on dust mites and also be mindful of like your headboard. I have a fabric covered headboard that I try and vacuum out because the skin cells will get in there and dust mites love, dust mites love those headboards. Um, so make sure you're vacuuming that out to remove dust, debris that those dust mites can feed off of. Make sure that you are vacuuming out and washing, laundering, uh, any sort of fabric curtains that you have in your room that also can favor dust mites. With the pillowcase, a lot of people, you know, that sleep on their side or on their stomach, they drool in their sleep a little bit. And so you have saliva there, which contributes to the moisture, which again, favors dust mites and also other microbes that uh, could be irritating the skin, but it's not directly the acne causing bacteria hanging out there and then getting on your skin and causing breakouts. It might be though that you're getting a little bit of a folliculitis, which is just an infection um, in, a, in a hair follicle. Kind of looks like acne, but is, is very differ different. The fabrics that you sleep on, whether it be your sheets or your um, pillowcases, the material can you know, be soothing on the skin if, if you choose the right material, like silk is very cool, very smooth, very nice if you have sensitive skin, atopic dermatitis, it, it can be very nice on the skin. Is it an absolute must have to have silk everything? No. Obviously washing your linens regularly is super important, regardless of if you have staph, ringworm, atopic dermatitis, or acne. But uh, all that to say, like, you do not need these single-use face cloths. But one thing I will say, and a lot of people seriously side-eye me when I say this, and I get it, like, it's weird, but it, it has worked for me quite well. I don't really do it as much anymore, uh, but I do do it here and there, and that is I just don't use towels at all sometimes. <laughs> And it works for me for a few reasons. First of all, I don't, I'm not living in you know the Northeast with some brutal winter. Second of all, it works for me because um, it just does. What can I say? Like you, you let the majority of the water fall off of your skin while you're standing in the shower. Then you get out and the air kind of just circulates over your skin. I apply moisturizer while my skin is still a little bit damp. Um, while I'm completely naked and as TMI. I put my skincare products on my face while my skin is still a little bit damp immediately out of, off of, out of getting out of the shower. Um, you know, I have my hair up in a towel and then, you know, within a matter of moments, my skin is completely dry. I don't have a bunch of water all over the floor. I put my hair up in that microfiber hair towel, the Aquas towel, while I'm still standing in the shower. So I turn the shower water off. I reach for that microfiber hair towel, which I wash regularly. I forgot to mention those hair towels need to be washed regularly. Um, I grab that, put it around my hair. Most of the water comes off while I'm standing in the tub. And then I get out, step on a bamboo bath mat. Yeah, my skin is wet, but it starts air drying. It's still damp. I put moisturizer on all over. I moisturize my face. Uh, then I start to get dressed, moisturize my feet, put socks on. And honestly, you will be surprised at how 
you are able to air, air dry yourself. Like you'll see me use a towel in my videos because it's inappropriate not to on camera, as you can imagine. But in my day-to-day -day life when I'm not filming, I really don't use them, truthfully, on, on my body. I, I really don't use a towel. I don't pat dry my skin or rub a towel all over. I just don't find it necessary. One of the reasons I started doing that, honestly, is back when I lived in New York, it was so expensive to do laundry. You know, I had to, the building I lived in had a coin-operated laundry. It was like a dollar a load or something, $2 a load. So it was pretty expensive and you had to have coins to operate. I mean, it was like very, it was a big deal to do laundry. And so I found like, well, I'm gonna cut down on using towels because it's too expensive to wash them all the time. And I just stopped using a towel uh, when I lived there. And I know I said, I don't live in the Northeast, so it works for me, but that obviously was a place where it got very cold and I was able to do it there. So it worked, it, it's worked out for me, but I get it, it's not, right for everybody. But all that to say, do not be dropping a bunch of money on these single use towels. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.